Hello YouTube, this is Lloyd de Jong. Someone contacted me today and asked me about the issue of menstruation in Islam. Let me go through some of the major sources then to discuss what it says. This is arranged fairly off the cuff, so take it uh, for what it's worth. But I'm going to go through some of the Sharia and Tafsir sources that inform the what the Islamic consensus is. And of course if it's in the Sharia, it's that's it. It's written in stone, it's done. So, I have a number of uh, sources lined up here. You'll see here, these are all these tabs here, and I've got a couple more as well in another browser. So we're going to go through a bunch of different authoritative sources to see what it is they say about menstruation in Islam. This again is the Reliance of the Traveler, which is, as you know, as I've stated many times before, the most popular, most famous, and most reliable, most trusted, most common Sharia manual in the world. So it says it is unlawful for a woman to pass through a mosque, right, when she thinks some of her blood might contaminate it, but also it is unlawful for her to make love or take sexual enjoyment from what is between her navel and her knees. And what is rather interesting at section E13.5, if a woman claims to be having her period but her husband does not believe her, it is lawful for him to have sexual intercourse with her really convenient really really convenient make a note though in chapter e14 on filth in islam or nasaja how have you pronounce that section e14.1 states that things that are filth filth means one urine uh, considering the last episode we did with the importance of urine and urine being number one in filth fascinating um how that works two excrement and three blood so, blood is considered unclean, it's filthy in Islam. Let us then go to the next source. And this is a document on Sunni Sharia law. It says here, by sexual intercourse, section 9, sexual intercourse is prohibited under the following conditions during menstruation. Menstruation prevents intercourse or touching under the waist wrapper, that's from the waist to the knees, even after the end of the period. So, I think that's pretty clear. Sex is out. And that would, I assume, also mean that foreplay around that area is out. This is um, a different Sharia manual, Sharia law. It says, Nur al-Idda, the light of clarification. Sexual intercourse is unlawful for a menstruating woman or a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding. But then further goes down here and it says, it talks about Tirmidhi in chapter of Hajj 960. If a person does have sexual intercourse with his wife while she is menstruating, then it is recommended for him to give charity with a dinar, repent, and do not do it again. It has been stated that, that if the blood was dark, then one should donate a dinar, and if it were yellow, then one should donate half a dinar. Okay, and that comes from Abu Dawud. Interesting. Now let's have a look. Um, it is also at the bottom here. It has also been mentioned that if it occurred at the beginning of the period, then the amount is one dinar. If not, then half. Additionally, it is confirmed in Al-Mabsut that if one says it is permissible to make love to his menstruating wife, then he has committed disbelief. This goes against the previous ruling, but it says that if one says it is permissible to make love to his menstruating wife, then he has committed kufr. Rather interesting. Work that out for yourself. Intercourse with one's wife during menstruation. And this one is, again... Ah, looks like it's Reliance of the Traveler. P75.21 The Prophet said, Whoever has intercourse with a woman during her period, or sodomizes a woman, or who goes to a fortune teller and believes him, has committed kufr, unbelief, if he considers any of these permissible. Okay, fascinating. Let's go to the next one, called the Guiding Helper. Sexual matur maturity has many signs. One of these is the emission of reproductive fluid. So in those terms, then, if you you have your period, then apparently you are ready to have children. So another sign of sexual maturity is the discharge of menstrual blood from the vagina. But notice at point 77 here, if a woman gets pregnant before ever having a menstrual period, she's considered mature. So let's say you take a nine-year-old just to pick a random number, and you have sex with her and she has a kid, while well, then she was sexually mature. There you go. Um, but make of that as you will. I'm just going to read this to you. 
Let's look at Tafsir al-Khurtubi, and this would be volume 20. They used to avoid normal intercourse with women when they were menstruating, and they would have anal intercourse with them during their period of menstruation, and then this was revealed. And so the companions asked the Prophet about this, and Allah revealed, they will ask you about menstruation. The Messenger of Allah said, do everything short of intercourse. But then goes on, this verse is used as evidence by those who forbid sexual intercourse with a woman experiencing false menstruation when blood is flowing, since all blood is impurity and must be washed from the clothes and the body. The position of the people of fiqh, of the law, that would be sharia, essentially, and knowledge is this, even if the bleeding is considerable, Ahmad said, I prefer that a husband should not have intercourse with such a woman unless her, her condition persists for a long time. So abstinence in that case. And it says here, so keep apart from women during menstruation. This can either mean during the time of menstruation, or it may refer to the place of menstruation itself, in which case it would merely mean avoiding the act of sexual intercourse. Go to the next one. So, interestingly, this is a historical story that plays out in Al-Tabri. This is in volume 5. Take a silvered colored collar dove and write on its leg with the menstrual blood of a blue-eyed virgin girl and release it and until a light on the city wall the latter will crumble away that was in fact the talisman of the city and only this could destroy the city so Sabur did that and got ready to attack them now notice it says in many pre-modern societies menstrual blood has been regarded as possessing special power in certain cases for healing but more often for wreaking violent and harmful effects and let's go here here the violent effect, the shock to the order of nature that spontaneously brings about the destruction of the walls of Hatra, arises from the passage of unclean menstrual blood from the pure virgin to the pure dove and its consequent supernatural effect. Possibly this has to do with the reasons why they have this concern about menstrual blood, why it's unclean. So, yeah, um, take that, well, as you will. So let's go to Tafsir al-Jalalain. Now they speak again of menstruation, but now notice this is about the garden or paradise. They shall, they, there for them shall be spouses of Huris and others. Okay, so spouses of Huris. So which are the women, right? So who are the others? What kind of others? I'd, I'd like to know, but anyway. Purified from menstruation and impurities. So your wives in paradise will be purified of menstruation and other impurities. They won't, have, they won't menstruate. So the perfect wife doesn't menstruate. All right, let's have a look a little further on, also in Tabri, uh, sorry, no, also in Al-Jalalain. Well, this is on Quran 2, triple 2. So part with women, refrain from sexual intercourse with them in the monthly period in this time, or on the part affected, and do not approach them for sexual intercourse until they are pure. Sexual intercourse, as God has commanded you, so when they have cleansed themselves then come to them in sexual intercourse as God has commanded you by avoiding the female organ during menstruation and not resorting to any other part should be simple enough to explain to yourself Allah said to his prophet they would ask you about sexual intercourse during menstruation say O Muhammad it is harmful it is filth and unlawful so keep away from women at such time refrain from having sexual intercourse during menstruation and go not unto them, do not have sex with them until they are cleansed of menstruation. Let's see what it says here. Give glad tidings, Muhammad, to the believers who ward off penetrating their wives in their anus and further abstain from having sex with them when they are menstruating, that paradise will be theirs. Let me see if there's anything further in this passage that I want to look at. Nope, let's move on. Tafsir Asbab. Allah exalted as he revealed, they questioned thee, O Muhammad, concerning menstruation, say, It is an illness, so let women alone at such times, and go not in unto them until they are cleansed. So that's what it says there. Let's keep going. Actually, let me see if there's anything additional here that I need to... Okay, no, that was it. And in a book called uh, Usul At-Tafsir, this is about this particular verse in the Quran, and it says the general meaning of the verse that menstruating women should not be approached sexually is confirmed by events surrounding its revelation. Yeah, that should give you a fairly clear idea as to what the perspective is here. Let's have a look. 
This is an older Sharia manual. Uh, this one is an archive.org. The reason I'm using the archive.org version is that the PDF version is not searchable. So it's called the Minhaj al-Talibin, and it's by Imam Nawawi. You can find it on um, archive.org. And the nice thing is if you go to archive.org and you use the search function, it will allow you to search inside the document. Okay, so let me uh, full screen this so you can see. This is called Chapter 8. This is one of the older Sharia manuals. Right, so Chapter 8, Menstruation. So it says the age at which a woman can begin to have menses is nine years. I wonder why they, they pick nine years. Um, okay. So the legal consequences of menses. So in, according to Sharia law, there are legal consequences to a woman having periods. And blood happens to also have its legal consequences. But she is forbidden to pass through a mosque if she fears she may soil the building. She may not fast. And she may not be touched by a man on the part of the body between the navel and the knees. Though according to some authorities, this prohibition refers only to the act of coercion, only to sex. Right, so that's one opinion that says, well, okay, well, you can do some, some other stuff, you can, you know, fool around, but sex itself is forbidden. Let's go back to the reliance of the traveler, and um, this is on menstruation. So here we have the reliance of the traveler on the menstrual period, so that's section E13.0. And let's have a look here at... E13.5, paragraph number 2, oops, and it says here, it is not lawful, it is unlawful, it says at the bottom of the page, 93, go to page 94, it is unlawful to make love or to take sexual enjoyment from what is between her navel and her knees. Now, Reliance is the most reliable manual we have, so that's something to use. Um, so, think of that opinion. Okay, so, to end off, Something I want to show you is the opening. This is the very first passage of the Quran. Let's go to verse 7. This site is called QuranX. Q-U-R-A-N-X. Extremely useful website. Incredibly useful. If you want to see a different translation, I'm going to randomly pick Aubrey here. Now we've added the Aubrey interpretation, well, Aubrey translation to this. So the opening, this is the opening. So now if we want to see how many hadiths we've got, we can click on that and you can see here's hadith related to that verse. And if you want to look at the tafsir, let's look at the tafsir. All right, let me just go back. This just says, The path of those whom thou hast favored, not the path of those who earn thine anger, nor of those who go astray. Curious, who earns their favor? Well, those are the Muslims. And who earns the anger and who goes astray? Well, those are the Jews and the Christians. How do we know? So the hadith doesn't tell us much, but let's go to the tafsir. These are the major scholarly interpretations. Let's click on this. All right, so let's type in the word Jew. And yeah, it's the Jews. And you'll see the Christians. If we type in Christians, we're going to see the Christians lit up as well. So the Jews have gone astray. They've earned God's anger. And if we uh, look up Christians, yep, we're there too. Okay, so, so think about that. So this is in... Ibn Khatir, right? So there's plenty to be said. He's the one who generally says the most. Um, so those are the available tafsir. But what I really want to show you is, is this, the search function. So let us look for, uh, I don't know, let's look up jihad. Just a random concept. Not sure what that word means. Let's look in all the hadiths. And we click search. And we have 100 of 256 results and every single reference to jihad. It's pretty good. Let's look at all the commentaries, all the tafsir. Let's have a look. Oh boy, there we go. You want to find something? This is a great place to look. It's called quranx.com. Q-U-R-A-N-X.com. Excellent resource. Really good resource. Okay, that's it for me. Hope that was useful. Thanks. Have a good day.